All right, in this video, I want to introduce the vascular system. Um, first of all, just as a summary of flow, we know that from the left heart, blood goes into the arteries, then it goes into the arterioles, um, uh, to the tissue, and then the capillaries, which then collides uh, to form the venue. Um, then from the venue, uh, you have uh, the veins, and then there's the vena cava, then back to the right side of the heart. So this is the systemic circulation. And then you also have um, the pulmonary circulation, which we're just from learning about with Dr. Uh, Kartek. Um, we also want to appreciate a few things about um, the vessels themselves. Now, though the distribution of these may differ depending on whether these are arteries or these are veins, and even what type of arteries, you have some that are muscular, more muscular than others. Um, but what we basically see here is we see um, a vessel, okay, which if we look critically, uh, it is lined with cells known as endothelial cells. And these endothelial cells have surrounding them the muscle, all right, the smooth muscle. If we look at its cross section, we have the endothelium right in the middle, and we have an intima lining with the um, smooth muscle surrounding it, and then the outer layer, which is the adventitia. Um, maybe just a few things before we go into the details. What we can learn from here is that. The endothelium itself is this group of, of cells that respond to um, flow or they, they respond to stretch and uh, they also uh, respond to hormones and they are known to secrete um, regulators, vessel constrictor substances, which we will appreciate soon. Whilst the smooth muscle themselves, they have potassium, uh, calcium, or and chloride channels, um, and contraction is due to what we have learned, which is the myosin light chain mechanism. Um, we also can appreciate the fact that for arteries and arterioles, you are talking about changes of from the iota 2.5 to 0 0.4 uh, centimeters to about um, 30 micrometers uh, changes. All right, what else do I want us to just pick up and appreciate? Um, the, the iota, as I said earlier, is largely elastic and um, you have arterioles that are less elastic they are more um, masculine so these don't necessarily stretch but they have the ability to have their smooth muscle contract and once that happens like we saw earlier we are going to have uh, them constrict and so we have limited amount of blood uh, passing through uh, passing through them and so they're known as resistance um, vessels. Um, maybe we can also highlight the fact that um, the capillaries are thin walled, okay, and this is just a single uh, lamina, thin walled, and um, we have uh, fenestrations as well, uh, and capillaries is more for exchange of um, uh, gas and we've learned about this, but we still need to just remind ourselves what we're talking about. In terms of veins and venues, these are low pressure and uh, they are increased in terms of diameter. But their main function is more of reservoir uh, than any, more than anything. Uh, they have very little muscle and um, they are innovated, yes, with the smooth muscle just to allow for maybe constriction and to get back, uh, to get 
blood back to the heart, uh, like we said, in terms of Venus return. Um, I think from here now, I want to just, you know, concentrate on uh, some physics. Uh, we're going to start with flow, okay, uh, beg your pardon, we're going to start with flow. Uh, so we want to differentiate flow, pressure, and resistance. What are these? So uh, we see that flow is usually from um, a place um, where there is high pressure to one where there is low pressure in most times and it is the amount of blood passing passing through a part of the circulation uh, usually this is per unit time. Uh, and of course we have pressure gradient as a driving force. And um, when there is any impingement, okay, when this is stopped, okay, or this is blocked, we call that resistance. Alright? So if you're going to put these three together, you can actually say flow is equal to the effective perfusion pressure, and you want to divide that by the resistance. Okay, the next thing that I want us to appreciate is velocity. What is velocity? So velocity is um, the rate of displacement. Uh, now, what what are you displacing? This is blood, of course, and it's also in unit time. All right. So. Um, this one is usually noted in a linear form and what has been observed um, is that it is directly proportional to flow and indirectly proportional to the cross-section area, All right? So what we're saying here is if we increase the area, we will reduce velocity. Uh, so this side, we can say velocity is equal to blood flow, and then we can divide that by the cross-section which is the same as blood flow can be Q over A or also Q over pi R squared. All right, um, some more physics. Blood flow Okay, so blood flow has been uh, noted to be proportional to the pressure gradient. We have already sort of uh, said that. So if the driving pressure is more, blood flow will be more. If the resistance is high, blood flow will be low. So um, maybe I could just put these things together. Uh, flow will equal the change in pressure over resistance. This we have already, it's one of the first points that we saw. Okay, and then we're saying resistance is equal to the change in pressure over flow. Okay, so that's just uh, changing uh, subjects here. 
Um, in specific organs, we see that the change in pressure overflow is sort of different. And we can use uh, things such as um, the, the, the Doppler flow meter to just see what is going on in, uh, in these areas. Um, maybe another thing that I would like to talk about now is um, resistance. I would like to just talk more about it. So when we talk of resistance, we are talking of um, two things that we can use to appreciate it. First of all, we want to say that if there is an increased length of a vessel, you will find that there is more resistance. Okay, and in terms of radius, uh, of course, if there is reduced radius, there will be more resistance. Um, what else would I like you to note? All right, now having done that, maybe now we can go into um, each of these. Uh, vessels and just appreciate their physiology. Let us start with the arteries. Okay, so we'll start with the aorta itself. So the aorta, as I said, is more elastic and um, you find that it accommodates a lot of blood due to the cardiac output. And uh, pressure in the aorta is about 120 over 80 we already uh, also